And now, coming to you live from the tri-state area and San Francisco, California, it's the best part of Wednesday, Waffle Box, with your hosts, Mike Fish and Kush Hayes. Ooh, welcome to Waffle Box, the podcast where we talk about anything, everything, and nothing all at the same time. Coming up on episode 80, we look at the filth of this country as we deep dive into the 2022 facts and figures from Pornhub. We're also looking at our feel good story <laughs> of the week. Uh, Kush is going to be reviewing a movie about a um, villainous doll, as if there's not enough of them. And so much more. I'm Mike Fish, and I am joined, as always, by this main man from San Fran, Kush Hayes. Kush, how you doing, buddy? What's good, y'all? Kush Hayes here, coming to you. 80th episode of the original Waffle Box that is the yeah. best part of Wednesdays, and you accept no substitutions. This is amazing. Like, How did we get here, Mike Fish? Uh, by doing I'm 79 doing... other episodes. Oh, shit. Well, that math adds up, sir. That math yes. adds up. That's why you're the dude. That's why you, that's why you put all this together. That's why the uh, production values are bar none. For those watching the video version, you'll see that I am sporting my brand new hmm. Target t-shirt from nice little throwback to Kirby. I like it. I like it a lot. You know, I've never played that game, but you, 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 you can't say anything bad about the guy. It's weird. No, if not, you'll just headbutt you. <laughs> well, you don't want that. That's a whole lot of Kirby. Like he looks nice, but don't don't fuck mm-hmm. with Kirby. I won't. How you been there? You look wrapped up. Is it a little bit moist? A little bit wet over in San Francisco wow. right now? We were bombarded with thunderstorms this afternoon, man. It was pretty dope. Uh, it's one of those things where like, oh, I wish it was happening at night, because then we would have something cool like this behind me. Um, but yeah, it, it just sheets, sheets of rain, and like, you know. We have little, we have we have our storms in San Francisco, and this is one of the ones with like they're sending us flash flood warnings on the phone. Like, oh, holy I shit! I get those. Uh, I bet you get more of those than I have for sure. We get, we get but a, yeah, man, several a year. We had a uh, thunder shaking the house, hail hammering the windows. Uh, again, sheets of rain, and then because of the way the street is in front of my house, like I had two small rivers for about an hour going down the street. It was. This is yeah. This was this was an early one today. Well, at least you're safe but, and dry and warm. Yeah, and don't call FEMA just yet, kids. We're we're gonna be okay. We're gonna get through this one. It's all hills. The entire city is hills. It's just hills. I just walked up the I street. Feel it's bad because where I live, I live on top of like a pretty steep hill. Mm-hmm. So like those who literally live like down the street from me are screwed when it rains. But I'm just like, oh, it looks nice. <laughs> kind of feel bad, but there's a. Um... A you made life choices. West Portal, and all of their garages are subterranean. So that means like you're on street level, and then to park the car, you go, you take a slight decline underground, and then you're you're in the garage. But all those fuckers are prone to flooding. I guarantee you, all those houses got flooded today. No matter how many I, sandbags they had. A buddy of mine, he lives um by the not in long island but it's close to long island so he lives like on the bay mm-hmm. and recently he had a bit of a, a flooding situation uh because they got the, all, the house he owns now had issues with is it hurricane katrina i believe it was oh wow! and so That's now they're all they're all pretty much built on stilts so they have like a, a basement but they don't advise you to keep anything in it because just in case but um <laughs> it was quite funny i texted him i was like hey how's it doing like this because the rain was really bad that day. And he was like, oh, yeah, the basement's flooded. And you, you'll, you'll appreciate this bit of humor. He was like, oh, I hope my kayaks are okay. And that's <laughs> it. To which I responded, hey, they can take a lot because they just rise above it, baby. Oh, shit. Damn, Mike Fish. That was cool. Wow. That was a great one, dude. I, I know. That. I wrote that in my, my diary and everything. Today was a good day. <laughs> Have you had that chambered in your back pocket for a while? Or like, was that just right off the hip? Yeah, I just have like kayak jokes ready. Just just, just in case. Right. You've got to be ready not? for every situation. I don't I want agree. to be left with my pants down. Um, Before we get into the show, I had a bad a kayak update. joke today is not the same. 
I watched for the first time yesterday, Top Gun Maverick. Oh, what'd you think? I thought it was a thoroughly enjoyable movie. I would almost say it's better than the original. But um, yeah, that's a good, that's, that's a fair argument. There was a couple of things that I have issues with. For Pretty one, fair. I did find funny at the end when I can't remember their um, rooster and dick face. Um, was it Hangman? There we go. Hangman. Yeah, Hangman. Hangman's the best character. At the end of the movie, they have pretty much a mirror image of the scene from the first Top Gun where sure. Ice and Goose get out on the planes. And, like, and I thought it was funny. But they, pretty much it made me laugh where he, they were like, hey, you're a hell of a pilot. And pretty much the other guy was like, yeah, you killed a guy. And it's like, no, right? I, I, that made me giggle a little bit. <laughs> um, <laughs> The worst people, like Val Kilmer. I felt bad for Val Kilmer. Yeah. Because for uh, those that don't know, scene. he had throat cancer. Mm-hmm. And a glandular and he, issue before that. He And he, he, he got hit pretty hard, let's just say that. He was in a hell of a hard. But as far as I'm aware, unless I've heard, I I've missed any updates, he is now cancer free, right? But he's still oh. pretty messed up from it, as far as I'm aware. I did not hear that, but that would be the best news we could hear. I, be- I, I looked, but I could be wrong, but I believe I heard that he got he got rid of it. But anyway, okay. I just felt bad. Fingers crossed. That they said to him, hey, Val, we're doing a sequel to Top Gun, mm-hmm. and we want you in it. And he's probably like, oh, yeah, that's awesome. I haven't done any roles for a while because of my situation, but hey, I would l- nothing would make me happier than to reprise my character from Top Gun and be Iceman again, right? And then they say, oh, hey, um, by the way, your character in the movie is going to have throat cancer. And it's the role I was born to play. And he's probably like, oh, I, I mean, I, yeah, that makes sense. Cause hey, yeah, let's call it out. You know, I have been impacted by my issues with throat cancer. So it makes sense. You know, so it's, it's not an elephant in the room. I'm okay with playing a character with throat cancer. It's okay. Sure. And then they go, okay, no, that's fine. Okay, cool. As long as you're fine with it. Oh, oh by the way, um, also your character that's suffering with the disease that you actually suffer with in real life is going to then die of that disease. Oh, yeah. oh, um, I mean, okay. okay. As, 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 as long as it's pivotal to the story, right? Eh, yeah, sure. kind of. Yeah, actually. Hey, oh, they, they, it just had, it just gave the ability for Tom Cruise to be angst again. They could have done that otherwise. Mm-hmm. They should have left Ice Man alone. Bless him. <laughs> he was doing no wrong. But anyway. I mean, you you can't have Ice Man back everybody up in an F fourteen again. Like the it's it, yeah, that if would, there's going to be an Ice Man character, this is this is it. So yeah, I, I'm pretty sure Val Kilmer was 100 percent comfortable with everything going into it. I mean, if it's not throat cancer, 30 years down the line, it would have been like he's playing the grandfather who's only got three days left to live, so he's trying to keep every every last moment with his grandchildren and learn to appreciate life and then dead like i mean ever everyone eventually plays that role so. and then after he dies the whole family realize huh, our issues aren't that important and then they all come together again at christmas and love each other yeah thanks grandpa see, see, you've seen the movie thanks grandpa ah <sighs> well, there you go as long as he was okay, with it, I guess. But it just, it's kind of like, like that's kind of weird. Mm. I thought the weirdest scene in the movie was after the success of Secret Murder Mission, Tom Cruise goes back to Jennifer Connelly's bar and then is just surprised that like she might not just be there. Like it's two in the afternoon <laughs> on a Sunday or whatever. And she the, not the guy was like, yeah, she she took the kid on a boating cruise. And he was like, well, when will they be back? And he's like, I don't, I don't know. know. Oh, oh, here's a fucking clue. Before the bar opens. That's when she's going to be back, stupid. Oh, hey, the, 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 earlier in the Roy, movie. I know how do you like... keep getting in here when this bar is closed? <laughs> like, this is like the third time this movie you've somehow snuck in here. 
somehow you, you just walked right on in like you own the fucking place, Maverick. And, you know, there's there's a scene where you can't put your cell phone on the bar. But guess what? She, she does have a phone. And you call up and like, hey, Jennifer Connelly, I'm back from super secret murder mission. And I guess what? I survived. What you doing later? Like, <laughs> use the phone, man. It's it was it's the weirdest scene. It's the weirdest scene in the whole movie. And it's just like, no, uh, no, I would say I the weirdest it. scene. I blew it. Like I, I had it had it all for myself, and then I lost it because I had to go on super secret murder mission. And, and then he's like, "Oh, hey, you're at my garage now." Well, that was the weirdest scene for me when, oh, like, like he's there the garage. fixing the plane with his new best friend Rooster, mm-hmm. and then he, I guess, he hears a noise or something. Go away, Siri. Um, and then he looks around and he sees. The daughter of his love interest just like staring at him yeah and then and then weird she just kind of goes and this is going to be bad audio but for those watching she just goes <laughs> mike is presenting like, like she's like a game show hostess reveals her mother and kind of exits mm-hmm. stage right it's like what the fuck is this is weird it's very creepy but hey, yeah. call it creepy, but yes, that was also weird. Also, very, very presumptuous that they're just going to let little girl hang out with Rooster. What if Rooster wasn't there? She's just going to hang out in this garage while these two assholes just fly around in the sun. But, by so the way, what if, he, what if he's a pedophile? Still the best movie of 2022. See that mustache? Hmm. Can never be too No, 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 no. Too dark. Too dark, Mike. There's too dark. All right, let's switch up the subject then. Let's talk about porn. Um... Hey! <laughs> So Pornhub, they got our released, letters. Pornhub released their 2022 data, and when I found this out, I had to check it out. And my God, did they release some data? They went deep dive, and so I sat there for a good 30 minutes analyzing this information. I even put a spreadsheet together. That's how oh. intense I was. And there's some <laughs> interesting information about America coming from this okay. study. So what we're going to America, we, not... we're going to be talking about you know state by state what they're into we're talking about which states spend more time on Pornhub versus the others it's it's um, and then we're I mean, going to play a little game states in the union Mike there are so I hope we're not doing all fifty no I'm I'm because some oh. of them are like standard. I'm not going to go through, but there are some ones that kind of jump out at me. And there are even some things on here that I actually legitimately and without any filth, I had to look them up because I'm like, I have no idea what this is. I've okay. So, but for first, we're going to talk about because they released their top 10 most searched words. And so for this, we're going to play a little game of Pornhub Family Feud. Definitely needs a better title. <laughs> yeah. The Hayes family. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. Yep, you're playing. You're playing this. Okay. So as per Family Feud, you have to guess what's on the top ten most search terms in 2022. Pornhub, three strikes, and you're out, my friend. So you know, no, no conferring with the family yet. But uh, Kush Hayes, what's your uh, first guess of the top 10? In the top 10. Yep. I'll be impressed if you all 10. Just want to let you know that. Asians. Asians. It's number five. Do you like that? Even all the sound wow. effects. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, Step siblings disappointed in you, America. I'll allow it. Stepmom was number seven. <laughs> Only number seven? Only okay. number seven. <laughs> um, so then I guess MILF isn't in the MILF has got its own category, right? It, 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 it just clarify, is that your guess or no? That was my guess. MILF. MILF is not in the top wow. 10. Wow. Fascinating. Strike number one. The other families get excited now. They could steal. They could steal the money. 
What's your next guess? Yeah, it's literally just the buzzword itself. So, um, barely legal. Fucking (laughs) help. No, that's not on the top 10. Good. Uh, the, Good for you, America. I'm very proud of you. The, the Stevens family now conferring and they're, they're obnoxiously throwing up the X because they oh, want to no. get the How last one wrong. Stevens's. So they How can steal. Stevens's. So you've got, you've got two out of 10. Come on. I'm, I expect you to do better. I didn't, of... I didn't think you're going to get all 10, but come on. Come on. Bukaki. <sighs> what is this? 2000? You did terribly there. No, <laughs> apparently I thought that bit was going to go longer. Anyway, Good. so number ten, cream pie. Fascinating. Number nine, BBC, and I'm assuming they're not talking okay. about the British Broadcasting Company. There. Number eight was big ass. Big, big ass. Big ass. Got a great ass, and you're all the way up it. That's my impression now. Number seven, stepmom. Number six, threesome. Threesome. Only threesome? Yeah. And then we get into what, you know, people talk about the divisiveness of America. You know what? This this just shows how, you know, a melting pot this country is. Because number five was Asian. Number four, mm-hmm. Latina. Number three, Ebony. <laughs> Ebony? Ebony? Okay. No ivory. No ivory. Number two, hentai. Weird. And then number one was lesbian. Congratulations to lesbians for taking the number one spot. Proud of you. I know a dude, name will not be disclosed, who only watches lesbian porn. And it's just like, I mean, I get that's why that might be a thing, but it's not the the only thing. And I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm like, hmm, weird. The thing, like, obviously, hey, I'm not knocking lesbians. But everything else on that top ten is also weird. But it's hard to, you know, I like to, you know, use my imagination. It's hard to mm-hmm. use my imagination when I'm watching two women. Like, I need to, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. But then yeah. they released. I heard you saying. State by state, which is the most popular search term in each state. Now, again, I'm not going to go all through 50 states here. But there are a couple that stood out to me. For example, like Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Great state of Wisconsin. The number one search term from the fine people in Wisconsin. And now remember, this isn't just fellas. Mm -hmm. Everyone uses porn. Don't try to deny it. A couple of kittens and and dogs watching too. The number one search term in Wisconsin was pegging. Now, Pegging in Wisconsin. Fascinating. This was when I had to fire up the old incognito window to do a oh. little search. <laughs> I had no idea what pegging was. And yeah. for those who don't know, it is when a, it's basically like a role reversal, I guess, where the, the power the, reversal, the gentleman gets down and the woman sticks a strap on on and uh, goes to town. <clears throat> Blasts him in the ass. Yeah. She does. Then. It gets weirder. <laughs> so, Indiana. Indiana. Oh, and if well, anyone's watching or listening from Indiana, hmm, their number one search term, not, not lesbians, not Latinas, not Asians, not threesomes. No. Not pegging? Furry. Oh, yeah. Now, that's, that's the one the, where people dress up creepy. like animals and bang each other. Mm-hmm. And by the way, number one female search? furry might actually have a dude in it. Maybe, yeah. But I'm like, okay, I'm not, I'm not kink shaming here. But it blows my mind that out of all the searches, that was the number one. It's incredible. Like I've heard stories about furry conventions happening, and the convention producers or whatever insist that the hotel leave out litter boxes like in the lobby so that the furries can take a shit in the litter box when they have to, like, like the animal they represent might do. That's insane. 
That's why yes. if I went if I went to one of those, I'll just dress up like a dog so I could just piss and shit wherever. I don't have to worry about going to a litter box or anything. <laughs> it's mark my territory. <laughs> now there's three more states that I have highlighted here. Break so it down. I'm interested. Like Idaho, number one search yeah. is hentai, which you know it's Jap- it's like Japanese style animated pornography. A lot of tentacles, lots of rape. Yeah. Not a good time. Hmm. And then the two top ones, again, I'm not kink shaming, but I don't fully understand it. And also the fact that this is number one blows my mind. So in Ohio, mm. the number one search term in Ohio was LeBron James. PMV. BMV. Yeah. P. P for Paul. M for Michael. V for Victor. PMV, oh. which uh, apparently I'm stands for that. pornographic music videos. Ooh. To which, again, that these sounds are fresh. Well, they're animated again. So it's all animated and there's music to them and people are dancing and having sex. Now, Alaska. <laughs> Alaska. What kind of fine folks do? of Alaska. Alaska, all the way up there. Just... The number Between one Russia search term in Alaska was Alaska. quote unquote breast expansion. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is animated again, but this is literally videos of animated women and they're just standing there and then their the breasts start getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Number one, to cartoon to me, unrealistic, unhealthy, unrealistic proportions where, like, you just like those tits should just pop, like, they, they can't expand anymore. There's there isn't a size that exists on the planet for the what you're doing, yeah. Hmm. I mean, I guess I, I can't, you know, shame anyone without doing like, so. Let's do it. So, so, California, you're the California man. Any guess is what guy. California people, Lat- Latinos, it's big booty Asian. Latinos, Asian, Asian, number one okay. search That's... in California. Fascinating, mm. fascinating. Yeah, I should have saw that coming. I mean, I, that was my first guess of, of the night. So, New Jersey, Italians. <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> um, femdom, apparently. Okay. Oh, BDSM. The, the P of yeah, we're a, we're a kinky state apparently. Yeah, lots of lots of urination in that one. Now they've even broken it down to like the most popular hour for searching on porn, right? So how do they measure that? I guess traffic. You know? Yeah, traffic to their website. But I mean, there's you know twenty four time zones like. Anyway, what is the number? What well, I guess I don't know how it works, but yeah. yeah. So apparently, the yeah, most yeah. popular the hour to watch porn is Monday between eleven p.m. and midnight. Wow, you should be getting a rest, but okay. And the lowest, the least popular time, Tuesday between five a.m. and six a.m. Which apparently every other morning is good to go, but Tuesday. Dude. No god. Don't g- count me out on Tuesday, bro. I won't be there. But this was so this that make this makes total sense. Like the most popular day of as a whole. Sunday. I get that. I can understand that. Very next day. Thinking you know, of your conquests or your failures from last night. Yeah. Work tomorrow. Ugh. Let's, work tomorrow. Let's bang up one. Giants out. lost the fucking football game again anyway. Uh Whatever, it was our third string quarterback. I don't care. We're still going to the playoffs. Don't judge. Now, this one is for the lovers out there. Now, if you're currently single and right. you are looking Big surprise. for someone to give you a good time, you know, to take care of you, you know, to go the distance, if you know what I'm Do saying. Do the sexy thing. Oh, yeah. I have now two states for you. One state, so maybe you should consider because they 
they spent the longest time on per visit, which let's be honest, once you've finished what you wanted to do, you pretty much going to another website, right? So that's, we can pretty much from this information, work out how long it takes them to arrive. Let's just say that, right? So mm -hmm. the state <laughs> that, let's just put it here. The state that comes the quickest. Okay. Utah. Oh. Nine yeah. minutes and 52 okay. seconds. I mean, um, what's interesting about this, they're a very reserved culture, but they're also like, they believe in like having five wives at a time. So it's just like, uh, you, all right, but nine minutes. Yeah, dig it. And you'll be shocked to find out that the number one search term in Utah is Mormon born. So I don't even know what that would be. I don't even know what that would be. I know, but I'm looking <laughs> up after the show. Um, and then the state that lasts the longest, Alabama. 11 oh. minutes and 22 seconds. 11 minutes. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So shout out to Alabamians. I don't know if that's what they call themselves, but either you lost. They're a little more reserved or... over there. Some Southern gentlemen. They take their time. They, they, the, the ritual lasts a little longer. Their gloves are made of velvet. Drake, like even even when they're watching porn, they're like, "No, she has to come first. I'm a gentleman." <laughs> the women of Alabama wish that was true. Like the, the the porn's <laughs> going on, and they're like thinking of baseball. No, I, I gotta last longer. Mm. I embarrassed myself last night. Well, there you go. That's your porn hub stats Absolutely. for 2022. And the good thing is now I've. You know, put all this together. Next year, we can have even more fun comparing which one's got up and that stuff. I'll be there. So look forward to that. Early January. And I'll be like, I'm not looking at entirely. I'm not looking at all that Asian porn as much as they say I am. What are you talking about, Mike Fish? Come on. There's no way. Well, Nevada. See, Nevada's on here. I, I can't. You can't. I think you have to discount Nevada because it's the tourism there is so ridiculous like that doesn't count like never you know what i mean you can't but, but apparently that's cartoon they like cartoon porn in the corner apparently cartoon. pennsylvania the, the most very interesting specific. i found in that was um porno music video there used to be a time where like the playboy channel would actually like, show you the the uncensored videos that mtv wouldn't show you so like you'd see prince's sexy motherfucker uh, and you'd see the newest carmen Electra video where she's just all ass and titties just like no they're not like she she is not shy um the new warrant video whatever but then i don't know i haven't seen playboy tv in decades so maybe it's still a thing maybe not last one maryland number one hmm. search asmr yeah so they like that so to anyone listening in maryland hello and then i have to Random I don't know what yeah, it works. I don't know why I got these rocks on my desk. These I for some reason hear a lot of macaroni being stirred. And zips. I get I'm guessing like zips slowly done up and down again. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of zips, yeah. and so we can get away from this topic. Mm. <laughs> um I bought a, a hoodie, a zip hoodie, right? Mm. And so you put it on like you normally would, yeah. you know, you, you at the bottom, click, 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 and you zip it up, right? That's true. But then this one has like a, this bottom is another zipper where you can zip it up to where it opens again. Oh. But it doesn't seen go all the way to the top. Oh. So, so you basically like, you create like a cape almost. <laughs> so what, who is this for? This is so weird. Just, the only thing that comes to my mind after you describe that is like this is so you can take a piss in the wilderness but like also just i can and just i can superman. i can just unzip the jacket and do that yeah. come on guys like I'm, I'm still in a little huh. like into the room i'm, I'm very capable of taking a piss in the wilderness without peeing on myself depending on the way the wind is blowing well you always have to take that little if you're pissing in the wilderness blade of grass 
throw it in the air and watch where which direction it goes, then you piss, mm. you piss, you follow the grass. Follow the grass. Good call. There you go. Look at that. We're just educating today. Anyway, <clears throat> we've spoke about at length then people doing horrific things to themselves. You should be ashamed of yourself. Get a job. Um, but now let's talk about people. <laughs> Who are doing things with their lives? Let's talk about the world record breakers in this week's da, 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 world record of the week. Why? Why? Why would I? Why? 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 Why would you want to do that? Uh, uh, why indeed. Now, this world record takes us to. Oregon. Oregon. And this man broke an unusual Guinness World Record, which just says in the article, but we don't care because every world record is unusual to us. BBC. Um, so this Guinness World Record is when he alphabetical 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 alphabeticized. Jeez, I can't speak. Oh. All 26 alphabet. letters in a can of alphabet soup in the fastest times possible. Oh my goodness. Man, you're choking on that. World How much alphabet goodness. soup is this man eating? Before, before he came to the conclusion, like, this is the record I want to beat. Like, he's, he's, he's eating bowl after bowl after bowl after bowl and just staring at those letters the entire time and just watching them float around and go upside down and whatever. And then finally he went like, this is the record I need. This is, this is going to be my legacy to, to the world. This is what I've been putting this up for. Right. What would be more interesting is that the, the Guinness World Record for most curse words made out of one tin of alphabet spaghetti. That'd That's probably fun. could be a record. That could probably be a record, dude. Because I'm assuming they, they don't just do like 26 letters, right? Like it's not like one A, one B, one C. I'm sure they're not that precise in these these cans. I'd be surprised if you found all 26 letters and then oh, imagine the, the if rest. you just spent all this time doing that and then you get to it and there's no Z. Fuck. Or no O or no L or you just like you're just missing one letter. Like, yeah. Wow! So this I? is um. Was that an L that turned into an I? Like, oh, yeah. If there's two L's, just bite a bit off. Boom, fixed it. Um. So this fella, Jacob Chandler, said he decided to try to break the Guinness a Guinness World Record and looked through some possibilities before reading about the alphabet soup record. So he he was... researched which world record can I break, and this is the one he decided on. You go. Um. That. Was dedication. Quote, I was intrigued by the idea of alphabet alphabetizing I hate that word, apparently. A can of soup. <laughs> I've eaten plenty of alphabet soup in my life, but never I'm stopped sure. to think someone would make a challenge out of organizing the letters. Chandler said he made preparations, including finding the perfect size bowl and spoon. He's not fucking around, this guy. Yeah, right. Identifying the right kind of alphabet soup with large and easily recognizable letters. Smart. Do you go Campbell's? Do you go Franco American? Do you go pre pro progressive? Well, like, yeah, what soup do you pick? Also, he had to find out as well. He needs to make sure before he attempted this record, before he didn't want to make himself look stupid, that if he could tell the difference between letters like M and W. Smart. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. That's fair. Like, he didn't want to make a fool of himself. Like, he didn't want to get there. Long. So, yeah. So, how long do you reckon? You know, this is total guesswork. I don't know. How long do you reckon it took him to completely alphabetize? Yeah, I said it. All 26 letters in the can of alphabet soup. Go on, your wildest guess. Stab this it would be up. either, yeah, 90 seconds. Two I mean, he's minutes. just pouring it in. Two, Two minutes, minutes and eight okay. seconds. But is, again, is he heating not it up? Like, does he have to heat it up first, oh. or does he just pour it out of the can? I don't know why that it, even matters. But that's that'd probably that's make it question. harder, wouldn't it? That'd probably make it harder to do. 
things are a little bit more squishy. Just pouring it out of the can? I, Probably. Yeah, does, it, does it say, like, can he open the can first? Like, is it like, can open and then time start four? Or oh, is it yeah, time right, start, right, right, crack, right. crack, 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 crack? Hmm. Yeah, yeah did, did it take 90 seconds to boil and then he just did it in 18 seconds? Like, oh, so many, so many details omitted. But yeah, what a fascinating deed. Also, what a fascinating why do you want a bowl? world record. Just pour it out on the side. It'd be a lot easier. On a fucking, on a, on a, on a, on a cookie sheet. Pour yeah. it out on a fucking cookie sheet. Yeah. It'll spread out straight yeah. away. I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to do it. Now, after all that, maybe I could break that world record. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. But, um, <laughs> yeah. So, kudos to Jacob Chandler, who I'm sure Thanks. gets lots of friends jokes heading his way. So, he's like, forget about it. I don't want to be associated with a friends character. I'm going to do something with my life. Could I get any more friends jokes? Oh, my God. Maybe he made the most of it. Maybe he's like Nirvana, baby. Yeah, look at me. My name's Chun too. I guarantee you some chick gave him a, a handy because his name was Chandler. One time. It happened at least one time. <laughs> and then he had to go on Craigslist to find a guy named... Um... Joey. Joey, there we go. You can tell I didn't watch Friends. Yeah, good for him. Good for him. Chandler for breaking that record. Still to come on this riveting episode of Waffle Box, episode 80. Mark it down on your campus. We're talking Megan, the possessed oh, in This week's movie review, we have a inspiring feel good story to wrap up the show. We'll see you on the other side with the middle of the show quiz. Stick around up this short break. When it's time to close your bag, are you going to rely on something wimpy or something hefty? Hefty, hefty, hefty. Wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. Hefty. Wimpy. The cinch sack from Hefty. Fill it up and it closes up. Reopen it and put in more. Hefty, hefty, hefty. Wimpy, wimpy. Want a bag that'll close every time? Then don't send a wimpy bag to do a hefty job. <laughs> hefty. The amazing cinch sack from Hefty. It's now time for the middle of the show quiz. Hey, <laughs> Look at you, dude. You're going all over the place there. Use Something. the space, Mike Fish. You're, so you're, much you're, room for you, you Juilliard would say use all the space. There you go. Oh, you're doing the Megan stuff. dance, too? That's amazing. Oh, is that a no, spoiler? Alert. Um, yeah, it's the middle of the show, so it's time for the middle of the show quiz. Kush is reviewing Megan coming up later in the show, so I thought I'd quiz him. What's his knowledge about other movies? With killer dolls, not just Chucky. Oh, they're, they're awesome. Chucky Chucky. Actually, surprisingly, um, not bad. I feel like I'll do what? good on this one. Oh, exciting, exciting. So, if you should your first time tuning in the middle of the show quiz, it's nice and simple. I ask Kush Hayes five questions on a topic. Obviously, the name of the game is to get at least three out of five, if not five out of five. If he gets a question right, he hears this noise. And that makes him happy. However, if he hears this wrong, that means he could be wrong and he makes him sad. Nice and simple, five questions coming on up. Sip your wine there, Kush. Are you ready? I'm ready. Question number one. So what serial killer used voodoo magic to put his soul into a Chucky doll. Charles Lee Ray. Ooh, straight in there. There's no reason I should have known that, but I do. Well, sticking with the Chucky universe. Question number two. In The Bride of Chucky. Obviously, there's that awkward situation where his ex-girlfriend's like, oh, 
you was gonna propose to me and he's like bitch no i wasn't um how does he kill his ex-girlfriend oh uh, electrocutes her with uh, in the bathtub with a tv set boom no messing around two for two yeah that was a great movie too it's jennifer tilly right or is that megan tilly i get the i get the tilly sisters mixed up okay no not important. um question number three now i feel this is going to be a little bit more difficult so question number three who stars in the 1978 movie quote unquote magic as the ventriloquist and his evil dummy fats yeah you got me stumped on this one man and it's i can't even come up with the can't even come up with the generic name i want to come up with um mickey not mickey rourke um mickey rooney no no wait 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 oh, oh damn i was gonna say um the guy from fucking jurassic park sam neill anthony hopkins anthony hopkins oh anthony 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 whatever that would okay. probably have been my third yeah. okay. question number four the conjuring is based loosely on an apparent true story mm-hmm. where was annabelle the quote-unquote real annabelle mm-hmm. held for safekeeping in a glass case in the basement in connecticut oh i'll give you that you get enough of so yeah she was put in a glass case in the warren's occult museum in monroe connecticut oh good for me <laughs> even though clearly it was a, not a real story because it's a fucking doll you know it's, dull. it's not real anyway we can talk about that later okay okay question number five number five which 1996 movie was said to be closer and quote to don mancini's original intent for child's play what 1996 movie yes it wasn't connected with child's play or chucky or anything like that but apparently he was like, "Ah, oh, that's the cut. That that's what I was going for." Damn. Nin- uh, Nineteen ninety-six. I was a junior in high school, and I was drinking and smoking and chasing a lot of tail. Um, I, I I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know. I'm going to be embarrassed when you tell me too. Probably. Pinocchio's Revenge. Oh, but that's probably like a full moon film. Yeah. Okay. But still, you scored one, two, three out of five. Three. You win. Congratulations, because you collect your, uh, collect your prize. And in uh, Family Feud style, your your prize is a super modern car, which no doubt you'll probably have to Ooh. sell because otherwise the tax you have to pay on it and the money it's going to cost to insure is going to bankrupt your whole family. And leave you homeless. <clears throat> Damn, that oh. is dummy. I have. I can hate. Why games. would you do that to me? <laughs> Just give them money, and then they have to pay tax on the money, and they get to keep the difference. A car is so much. There's so much effort. You can actually choose to forfeit the car if you want. No, but you shouldn't have to forfeit the prize. You shouldn't have to forfeit the prize. You're a thousand. Just give me the money. It's the money. Dumbasses. Damn. There's a lot of sad faces on that Oprah episode. Yeah. I can't fucking afford a run a car. I don't think even I, even I got if I got a twenty twenty two model that that fuck up my uh twenty twenty three now or whatever it fuck up my budget in you know what I mean I'd have, mm-hmm. to, I'd have to sit down and be like what the fuck am I doing maybe I have to mm-hmm. start giving out smoking to afford this prize thanks Oprah I hope you don't have to quit smoking I know it's been a dream of mine to keep going you know but there you go. 
Anyway, just like Chucky, we want to kill some people off. In this oh. week's, <laughs> that's a really bad segue. But anyway, it's this week's trapdoor segment. I'm ready. Trapdoor segment is when I give Kush Hayes four, not one, not two, not three, not four celebrities. And he has to decide which one to kick off this overpopulated planet to help save the day. Yeah, I'm like Thanos. Two. Yep. It's like, well, like a, a budget Thanos, because when you snap your fingers, only 25% of the options go away. But I'm the wish know. version of Thanos. Yeah. Um, but my chin doesn't look like a nut sack. Indeed. Well, it kind of, you know, that, if it does, he needs to manscape a bit because that's, <laughs> that's, that's that too you. much bull hair. Um, I walked into that. I should speak. Look at it. Imagine, imagine going down on a fellow and you see this. Oh, Jesus. How many fellows are you going down on? Well, looking like this, maybe three or four. There you go. Jeez. All right. Good for you, Mike Fish. There you go. Yeah. I'm at that. Time is money maximize your effort um so yes okay. this week my ego has gone mad because i'm like you know mm. not only is there too many people god damn it there's too many michaels let's get rid of a michael okay so the four celebrities one mike tyson Ooh. two michael b jordan three Michael J. Fox for Michael Phelps. So Mike Tyson, the man most famous for biting off someone's ear. Michael B. Jordan, most famous for being um, Apollo Creed's son. Michael J. Fox, most famous for going back in time and Neil almost banging his mum. And Michael Phelps, Famous for just swimming. That's the swimmer. That, okay, uh, gotcha. Doing that Thank thing. That, yeah, he's the guy that won a, a bunch of medals. He's got the most medals. He's got more medals Something than Usain like Bolt. Yeah. Apparently, it's because obviously, so. you know, not everyone's good at sport. Uh, Michael J. Michael Phelps okay. has like more medals than most countries in history. This is true. So. Here's what's up. We're not getting rid of Michael Phelps. Like, obviously, I was, he's he was the only one on that list that I needed. Like, who was that again? Oh, it's the swimmer guy. Okay, like he's, I think he's finally retired, but he's he's a patriot for the United States of America. I, I really don't give a shit about swimming, but hey, man, like he's got like a hundred million medals, so good for him. He he's safe. Mike Tyson, he's he had a. He had a weird past. He's, be careful uh, with your words. He might be listening. Society. He's, uh, you know, he's done his time, but he's a charming fellow. And you just watch this guy on stage and you're you're captivated. You want to know more about his story. There's a there's a Hulu bio doc, uh, bio fictitious series. Blah, blah. Anyway, Mike Tyson, Which one is it? Is it bio or is it fictitious? I think they, I think they fudged some details. But still, oh, well, let's not get into um, that again. Sorry, right. you know, yeah. my thoughts on those biopics go to last week's episode. <laughs> we will talk more about that in future episodes. Michael B. Jordan, uh, I'm looking forward to Creed Three, dude. Uh, he directed it. I need it to be happening, and uh, I need to do the review here on the microdose uh, or the waffle box. Uh, so we're doing a mercy trapdoor tonight. Michael J. Fox, he has been in a bad way for decades. That dude has only been in pain. It's amazing he's lasted this long. But I, I want to end his suffering. This is not me making a black humor, dude. Like I, I'm not trying to be dark or edgy or anything. Like I wish this guy was in better health, but he's he's not going to be. It's going to happen sooner or later. So um, please please rest in peace, Michael J. Fox. You're going down the trapdoor. Heavy. We still have all your movies, sir. We still have all your movies that you were great in. All of them. Michael J. Fox has never been bad in anything. Even that weird sitcom, what was it? Spin City? I actually quite like that. Oh, I like Spin City. Yeah, he was great in Spin City. 
Spin City uh, because uh, of, of, of his uh, health problems. He had to leave that show. And then Charlie Sheen had to take over. Then, Still uh, not he... a bad show. I, 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 didn't, I, I, I didn't mind him mocking me, me, uh, Charlie Sheen. I thoroughly enjoyed Two and a Half Men. I almost, you know, I kind of looked up to him, I his character. I, I can't support you on that one. Why? I can't support you on that one, buddy. What, but, a rich guy that lives yeah, in a Manabu beach house? Just mm-hmm. getting drunk all day? Yeah, yeah I get it. I, I understand animal. this premise of the show. Okay, okay. You're related. You're related. I get it. I just, I just draw the line at locking prostitutes in cabinets or whatever. Well, I don't think that came up in the show. I think that was just more of his personal life, but there you go. Next subject. Oh, talk about yeah, Michael B. Jordan. You talk about Creed 3. Look it yeah, up. Man. Google it. Google it. Um, Creed 3. Do we have any indication on whose son he's going to be beating up this movie? Is it going to be Clubber Lang or Thunderlips? This is actually going to be a friend of his from his juvenile hall days. Oh, Not boring. related to anybody. Actually, it looks pretty intense, dude. No, um, but I want the throwback. That's the whole point. Jonathan Mates. That's the better point is. Give me Chris Hemsworth not... as Thunderlips Junior or something. Oh, that would be good. funny. There's wasn't he supposed to do the Hulk Hogan biopic? Yeah, what and then I that? think. Well, I think they Google Hulk it? Hogan and realized Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, Maybe we won't do a movie about him. Sad. He said the N-word how many times? Sad monkey. Lord. Exit. I mean, it has still been... They could have still made that an interesting oh, point in the film. But, oh, well. Oh, well. Or, I, 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 do you know what? I'm going to say that, you know, I'm not going to say that as a whole, you know, maybe Hulk Hogan does like blank people, but he definitely doesn't like them hanging around his door. Let's just say that. I have no comment. He's racist. Anyway, let's talk about movies. Um, <laughs> that can be racist. That can absolutely be racist. Rawr. Let's get to movies. It's now time to talk about dolls. Scary dolls. In this week's Scary Squishes dolls. Movie Review. Cush's Movie Review. Or is it like Meg Thregan? <laughs> if you can't pronounce alphabetize, you can't pronounce what you were trying to say there. Um, Megan stands for, damn it, it was the one thing I meant to write Model down. Three. Model 3. Yeah. Generative Android. And then I guess there's an N squeezed in there. At the yeah, end. it should, should be but, Mega, uh, if anything. But I guess that wouldn't be should scary. Be mega, right? No. Well, Mega could be scary. But no, I think it's, it's more a, scary because it's a general generic name. Yeah. Like, you could, you could, what would you be, what would you be more scared of, Kush? What would you be more like a, a doll that comes to life to kill you called um, Terrorizer or a doll that comes to life and tries to kill you called Steve? Fuck that, Steve. Oh. Steve would probably scare me. Honestly. From accounting? Ooh. Anyway, sorry. Carry on. <laughs> Steve from down the hall. Um, so we're talking about Megan. This is a Blumhouse presentation. It cost a whole $9 million to make. And in its opening weekend, made well over what its expectations were. And that was only $30 million. Um, it is, despite being labeled as a horror movie, this is a soft PG-13. It, uh, I kind of wish it was rated R, but that doesn't mean it would have been a better movie. It's one hour and glorious 42 minutes. And it stars... Uh, Allison Williams as Gemma, Violet uh, McGrew as Little Girl, international comedian sensation Ronnie Chiang as Love Ronnie Chiang. He's a funny dude. He's, he's a very funny dude. He's not good in this. Oh. He's not good in this. Yeah, but he's just he's just playing evil boss dude. How did that um, other actress come across star as Little Girl? Was she, was she convincing as Little Girl? Little Girl is the part she was born to play, dude. Yeah, little, don't worry about Probably. little girl. And then uh, playing the titular Megan, we got Amy Titular. Donald play, doing the body, 
and uh, Jenna Davis doing the voice. Both of these ladies I've never heard of before. One is actually like a 12-year-old girl. Um, anyways, this was written by uh, Kayla Cooper. She's uh, James Wan's writing partner, and she's also responsible for last year's Maleficent, or uh, 2021's Maleficent, uh, uh, Malignant, Malignant, two different movies. Responsible for Malignant and uh, Hellfest from 2018. Great goddamn movie. Gerald uh, Johnstone got a very limited resume, but I think that I think he's I think his schedule is going to get booked a lot more after this movie. Dude, this was a fantastic story. There's no reason it should have been this much fun. Again, it's a soft PG-13. What I mean by that is there's like one scene where like there's blood spatter. On, on an elevator wall. Otherwise, this thing is pretty pretty vanilla, but it's got a good mm. story. I would call it more of a thriller. Uh, definitely some fun parts in it. The trailer, trailer is whatever the trailer is. We're like when we get when we get to that dance that everybody wanted to see. Like the, that's the reason I pulled everybody in. That went a viral sensation. There's no reason for it. She just starts freaking out in the hallway. I wish. That would have been great if she did the thriller dance too, my fish. I saw that. Uh, every every movie would be Im- improved with the thriller dance from the internet somehow. <laughs> Story is about a uh, family has uh, suffered a horrific car accident where uh, both parents have died. Little girl has survived, and her next of kin is her aunt, who is a uh, robot computer programmer type lady. She. Uh, she works 20 hour days. She uh, doesn't have a boyfriend, doesn't have a husband, definitely doesn't have time for kids, and is just burdened with now having to raise her niece and trying to figure that out. And through that, she develops Megan. And Megan is supposed to be one, very expensive, but two, just like, you know, remind you, remind your kid all those little things that you don't have time to do, like, hey, flush the toilet and oh, wash your fucking hands, stupid. Um, here are reasons why you should eat your vegetables but here's another debate why maybe you don't want to um you know there's there's a lot of interesting commentary in this film but uh i had a great time the entire it did not disappoint this movie was only set up to disappoint me because i've been talking about it since like october or november and uh yeah man megan is here in 2023 and i look forward to seeing more of her in uh future editions which there will be that it that's it yeah question we're, we're gonna score it oh four out of five thank you you're not gonna give me make three me me, me three good three no just gonna go no no so how is it I so enjoyed, that, I, it's the problem I when you got numbers in the title what are you gonna do with like this is where you're gonna get have like those really obnoxious sequels like M- megan's revenge or megan's back megan's yeah i don't know i fucking hate those movies you definitely have to spell her name with the three substituting the e otherwise you're just going to get a list of megan actresses and yeah that's that's no good so the the folks at blumhouse knew what they were doing with this and uh, i look forward to more sequels in the very near future i mean without spoiling anything but i'm assuming the good folks of the syrup squad listening to this or watching this Assume that M. Thregan isn't nice after a while. Just like her, her fucking switch is weird. Like it definitely comes out of nowhere, but her programming is I am now programmed to not only serve this little girl, but protect her from emotional and physical harm. And, mm. you know, there's a bully at a camp. And guess what? Megan kills a kid. Um, there is a unruly neighbor or negligent neighbor who doesn't know how to take care of her dog. Uh, and so guess what? An animal dies in this film. Oh, that, that's going to upset a lot of people, actually. Oh. But it didn't upset me. I was like, go, Megan, go. But that's going to upset a lot of people. So Team dog, baby. I, Screw I you, M. Thregan. Your dog. Your dog is very well behaved, and you are on top of your dog. This lady is very. Oh, like, yeah, don't, well, don't reword that. She's a dog. She's gonna do what you do. I'm never on top of my dog. 
just wanted to clarify that before any like getting knock on the door, people trying to take my dog away from me. You are a responsible dog owner, Mike Fish, is what I'm saying, as opposed to the character in this film. So I want to be very clear we sleep in separate beds. Good. She sheds. So you reckon this is, I mean, I guess if you're, if you're talking about it, it's cost $9 million redos to make, and it already made that back many times over. It's almost inevitable that we're going to get a sequel. Not that I'm we're complaining. At least it's slightly original rather than a remake. I mean, the 2019's remake of the original Child's Play, and I had to word it that way, did a similar thing. So it's, I wouldn't say it's original, but it told told a better story do you ever watch i didn't but did you ever watch the the chucky tv series on sci-fi channel no i haven't gotten around to it like i, I don't have peacock is not accessible for me uh, up here but um yeah i understand it's good do you know what? i think i we i probably mentioned it several times now on this show but god damn it i'm gonna keep saying it until my voice is heard can the people of TV land that insist on revamping or relaunching or what's the other word that, that they use? It's um, rebooting. Rebooting. Can we please get the Tales and the Crypt Keeper? Please. Oh, they were, I want to say they were going, to, I want to say TBS or TNT Turner was going to do that and then like COVID shut that down real quickly. It was, it was one of those things that just like fell in the COVID well. Um, but yeah, there but there have been other anthology horror series out there that aren't tales from no, the, no, but the, the, the I mean the storytelling and the acting on that show I seem to remember, even from a very young age, was very bad. But the the Crypt Keeper was the, oh, he you just sold like the, the show. Puppet. Oh okay. he was the main event, okay. baby. Okay. Need a you know, you, someone said like you've seen the movies his hair. Maybe are they? Are they? Mm-hmm. How when? How long ago? Did I, I all I remember is watching the TV show vividly. But was there movies about that? So, so before the TV series on HBO, there were actually Tales from the Crypt and Tales from the Vault. These are two seventies anthology horror oh, films yeah, produced from the UK. So those are both great. You should actually go out of your way to see them, Mike Fish. Um, then the TV series happened in the late 80s, early 90s, and then they squeezed out two movies. They were going to do a third one, and then, the, and anyway, there's Tales from the Crypt, Demon Knight, which is fantastic. Billy Zane, uh, a very young Jada Pinkett, not a Smith yet, still Jada Pinkett. Fantastic. Name your film. mouth, Kush. Oh, okay. I'm will sorry. Smith will slap uh, you. But I just complimented her. Anyway, not he doesn't care. Then there was the. He just uh, hears a name and he just goes. Blood. You know, if Will Smith came into my house right now and slapped me, it'd be the best for our views right now. So, oh yeah, I'd I clip the it. shit out of that. It was just one slap. It was just the one Chris Rock slap. It would hurt. It would hurt a lot. I'm not gonna. Even, there might even be a bruise. I, I can't tell you there would be or wouldn't be. But uh, yeah. Anyway, then there's a bordello for blood. And that is not a good movie. That's uh, Corey Feldman. Yeah, Corey Haim. Feldman, not Corey Haim, and Jessica Hahn and Dennis Miller. And it was dog shit. It was a bad, bad, bad movie. It was so bad that the third movie they were going to do was called um, Bruce Willis, Meryl Streep, Goldie Hahn, Death Becomes Her. The head of the title. Death Becomes Her was going to be a Tales from the Crypt movie. And they're like, well, this is still a movie, but let's just get rid of that Tales from the Crypt brand because of. Oh, that's so sad. I I really enjoyed Death Becomes Her. If that could have been. Death Becomes Her doesn't hold up, but at the time it was like the. Oh, yeah, I haven't watched it in. Special effects. I haven't watched it. I watched it on a plane a few few years ago. Uh, I fell asleep. Um, But but at the time, it's Robert Zumeckis, and he's always. He was pushing the boundaries of where we could do with special effects. And that's like, it was understandable well, what has he why ever it was done? a successful comedy. 
<laughs> what has he ever done? Good, good point, Mike Fish. You, you take him down a peg. But yeah, oh, yeah. If I could watch Death Becomes Her and it was bookended by the Crypt Keeper going, <laughs> oh, that'd be amazing. Oh. I bet you they film scenes for it. I bet you they, there's Crypt Keeper footage introducing and outroing Death Becomes Her. I have to write to my local congressman. Let's get that shit released. I think that's how it works. I don't know. That's how it works. Anyway, once that happens, that will truly be a feel-good story. But until then, let's talk about feel-good stories that actually happened outside of my brain. In this week's feel-good story... This week's feel good story comes to us from Cumberland, Maryland. Now, people have often heard of the quote unquote people of Walmart. Yes, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's That's a horrific page. Scary. So this is, you know, this is a feel good story on many levels, and I'll get into the other one in a moment. But so basically, so this guy, this guy, Rory McCarty, uh, a small business owner with a big following on the TikTok, apparently. I don't... Good for him. Um, he was in Walmart one day and he saw this fella working the cashier and turned, got started, got chatting to him. And he's like, yeah, he's like a 82 year old, 82 year old. A uh, U.S. veteran who, I guess, still needs some money, so he's still working to check out at Walmart. And this Those guy pensions like, are very small. So this guy was like, uh, uh, uh. so he decided to start a GoFundMe for this U.S. veteran, whose uh, name Powerful. is Mister Marion. I don't really say his first name, but Mr. Marion. And mm-hmm. within days of starting this GoFundMe, uh, $108,682 was raised for this retirement fund. And Mr. McCartney was able to deliver this check for this money, which enabled Mr. Marion to finally retire after 82 years on this earth. So last week, Mr. Marion had his last day on the job after giving his two weeks notice. Local news media captured the new retiree walking into the Walmart parking lot with balloons and being greeted by applause of loved ones. The first words out of Mr. Marion's mouth after he was handed the check was, wow, all I can tell you is the good Lord has blessed me for what I did in my younger years. And so now he's uh, one way to look at it. Nice. living his life, enjoying his last few years on this earth. But what a nice guy. So it's, it's nice on two ways. You know, one, you know, I, I don't want to judge anyone, put, whether negatively or positively. You know, I often see, you know, some elderly people still working at these stores and things like that. And, you know, I must admit my first go-to is that, oh, my God, it's so sad that these old people are still working. But, you know, some of them, you know, I'm just, you know, my my dad, my, my dad's not old, old. He's getting there, though. But, you know, he's just, he still does some stuff on the side because he just, I'm just bored. I'm just, I'm just I don't want it. Retirement's boring. So, I just, right. so I don't, you know, maybe I some of these that. are the, you know, some, some of these might be just like, you know, ah, fuck it, I'm just, wants something to do so i'll just take a couple of hours shifts and stuff like that so i don't want to always be like oh i'm so sorry oh i feel so bad for you and they're like fuck you i'm enjoying myself <laughs> but this guy obviously was in need you know so they you know he's now able to retire at 82 years old but also never has to go back to walmart again so it's like a twofer it's a, it's a feel good story for two reasons 
This man has been saved from Walmart. We don't have any Walmarts in San Francisco. Um, they're in the East Bay, and I've had to go to them for several jobs. That place is a nightmare. Like, y- y- even, the, even the funny stuff you see on the Facebook and the, the Twitter uh, memes, just like, they don't do them justice. Like, that place is just chaotic to fucking navigate through. So I'm happy this gentleman it. doesn't have to go back there anymore. No, I don't get it. Because like, we, where I live, down there, right in that direction, can you see it in that right direction? Like about a mile or so, there is okay. a Target. Yes. And then we have, literally, we have now. literally like a couple of blocks further down, there's a Walmart. They're very close to each other. Mm-hmm. And okay. as far as I'm aware, you know, I haven't really dived deep into the research of this, but whenever I have had to go into Walmart, I prefer Target, shout out to Target with the Kirby shirt. But it's not like the prices are like dirt cheap in Walmart. It looks very, pretty similarly priced for all the stuff. I don't mm. understand why in Target you seem to have quote unquote regular people and Walmart. It's like, where the fuck did you it's come from? It's a weird branding, right? Yeah, right. Like they're just drawn to it. Like the homeless people of Civic Center. They're just pushed there. It's, um, yeah, I can't explain it. Like we, so San Francisco only finally got Target, like maybe, maybe just over 10 years ago. And then we yes. finally got a Target just down the street from me. And they're, again, just completely different, different environments from, from Walmart, which is, you know, it's, it's all the same store. It's all the same bullshit. It and, is. and the prices are very like maybe a cent, maybe a cent difference, you know, five cents difference. I don't know. But um Walmart for some reason has all the crazy. And people just living their own like what I get to, again, I went in there because I had to go to PetSmart, not to get too much of my dear diary, but I one day I had to go to PetSmart to get some some um tick medicine for my Oreo. And then right next to PetSmart is where the Walmart is. And I was like, you know what? Actually, I need to get, I just need to join in. And it's, oh, I don't, if I have to go to Target, it's, 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 I'm not going all the way to Target. Like, just get one. Thing. Fuck it. I was, I'm just going to bite the bullet and go into Walmart. And I was like, there, we've been, I was there for like five minutes and I had like three people just crash into my car because they're just oblivious in their own fucking world. I was like, what the fuck? Wow. Just, just, just people say like zombies. I'm like, oh, sorry. The fuck, the fuck is going on? So I just got what I wanted to get the fuck out of them. Don't ever go back. That's madness. I've, I've only had that a few times at Lucky's, but we never smashed into each other. But like, it was it was just less than that. We were like, oh my God, like you, 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 you turned left too quickly and I turned right too quickly and we almost crashed into each other. Oh, look, look I hope you're doing okay, friend. Travel safe, stranger. And then we, you know, just recourse, correct, and uh, yeah, madness. Sketches. Walmart is madness. So shout out to Mister Marion. Never has to step inside. Uh, we Walmart. never go into a Walmart ever again. Good for you. He's also going to get taxed fifty percent of that. So enjoy your fifty grand, sir. Way to just ruin that. Oh well, enjoy the year or two and then he was like 84 years old he was just like crawling back and and so, back hey, uh, so uh, I didn't realize I had to pay tax on, so I kind of I need a job again can I come back I'm sorry that I flipped you off when I left and then hmm. I, I hope you didn't flip anyone off oh I was he's a professional he knows not to oh if I if I ever off. come into some money and I get to quit my job I'm just like <laughs> If I win Classic. the Mega Millions last night, because this is Wednesday, obviously, um, <laughs> Mega Millions draw on Tuesday. I let's just say I haven't checked my ticket yet. There we go. That that Word. keeps it. Um, it's like one point one billion dollars. I'll have that. I'll have that. Some of that. 
And I'll be able to get like, right. more of these mood likes in the background. Look at me. I look like a professional Ooh. Twitch streamer now. I'm going to play video games obnoxiously and be like, hmm. hit the bottom button. There you go. <laughs> Saying that we do have a Twitch channel. If you want to go to twitch.tv slash Waffle Place, sporadically I might play a video game while I'm drunk. It's fun. Check it out. Ah, well, that wraps up this week's Waffle Box Kush Haze. We've got another one in the books. Me. But obviously, you do you do podcasts as well, don't you? You're a good boy. Tell the good people to serve squad what the uh, where they can find you for the rest of the next seven days until you know they get the craving fix of Weapon Box that you won next week. Well, you know what we do? We do a little thing called the microdose on the Bosnet dot family. Comes out every Wednesday. Comes out every Friday. Jesus H Christo. <laughs> microdose every Friday. This weekend we got Drew Angelman from uh, the Angel Cake Entertainment. We're going to talk about uh, our most anticipated movies of 2023 first quarter edition. Look at you dancing there. Good song. I like this song. As always, new episodes drop. What time Friday? Is there a specific time? Oh, I don't have breath. Jeez. What are you gonna tell them when? When can you find when? When's your new episode? But the mic dose drop on Friday. This Friday. This Friday at noon Pacific time. There we go. Jeez. <sighs> As always, you can follow us on our socials at Waffle Box P O D on Twitter and Instagram. I'll be honest, Twitter is the one I upload the most, so might as well follow that one. And um, follow me at Only Mike Fish. Follow this guy by going to Agnush underscore Hayes. There we go. And until next week, take care of yourselves and each other. That's all, folks.